For more than a week, searchers have been combing the dense forest here, trying to find any trace of Paul McKay. You know, a footprint or a pack of cigarettes or anything like that, you really got to be aware. On the weekend, dozens of volunteers joined the search, including American war veterans who feel a bond with the Australian soldier. But I would like to find him, get him out and, and get him the help he needs. It's now more than two weeks since Paul McKay flew to the United States for the first time in his life, caught a bus to upstate New York, then disappeared into the woods, apparently not wanting to be followed or found. He walked into the polar vortex, with temperatures of minus 30 degrees centigrade. We believe he was capable of um, enduring more severe conditions than the average person because of his training. They were pretty severe though. Yes, they were. Last week, the blanket of snow began melting. Searchers had hoped it might reveal some clues, but so far, nothing usable. Paul chose to uh, step off into one of the uh, largest wilderness areas in the east, uh, east of the Mississippi. Paul chose not to be located. He picked a good place to do it. It's known that Paul McKay has struggled emotionally since coming home from Afghanistan. The Australian Army sent a senior officer here last week to help the search. But it's still a mystery why he came to this remote corner of the United States in the first place. There is one possible explanation that police here are investigating. There's a US military base a couple of hours away from here, and it's possible that Paul McKay may have made a connection with one or more soldiers from that base during his time serving overseas. But so far, there's nothing to confirm it. The search team has been scaled down, but the search area has widened. I'd like to uh, think that Paul has left the area. Uh, tomorrow, Paul is due to fly out of New York, New Jersey and fly home. We'd like to see that happen. The search will continue into this weekend.